All right, so this is a continuation of the uh, cam settings and tech DB. I went ahead and drew a, a quick block with a hole in it, and that will uh, give us our, our basis to start. Uh, one of the things that um, in the solids, the default, well, control one, our default plane, our orientation plane will be the front plane. So that's pretty much what I've generated. The default coordinate system will be at the origin, which is at the bottom left of the part, which is not my most desirable location. So we will adjust that. I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the features. And just for an example, I'm going to pick a coordinate system and let's see, will that allow me to do the point? No. I was going to say I probably have to, to draw something there. I was going to see if I could put a coordinate system at the center. Let's just go that way and we'll go with the x-axis. This isn't really one that I'm going to use, but I need it as a reference. All right, so it doesn't go that way. Set up my coordinate system. All right, so if I have a strange coordinate system that is not going to be easy to generate, I can always create a sketch. So as I mentioned, it would probably um, be pretty easy to just do something like that if I was going to be at the center and then accept. All right, so when I make those changes or add, um, add geometry, then, then there's a, a CS for the, um, the whole center. Some, something semi-descriptive that we'll be able to, uh, to work from. All right, so that gives me a couple options on setting up for the, uh, for the tool. So the, uh, the mill machine, because I, um, I was still, and actually I didn't go back and update that. <laughs> All right, so I will want to go back to my VF3 and make sure that it's the default. And when I select that tool, it picks up my information. We come over to the tool crib. Uh, apparently in that tool, I did not set the, uh, the tool crib. So when I pick the machine, so there's something else that I'm identifying as I go through that I'll need to go back into the tech DB and update, make sure that it gets its, um, uh, the correct information. It did apply my post processor, uh, program ID. So this would be a description that I want to include in the, um, the header. And the stock size, I made this five by three by either three quarters an inch or one. So if you want uh, finish size, if you want your actual stock size, put in information that, um, that makes sense. And let's see, depending on the, um, on the post processor, these are going to vary. Some may only have the program number and the material. So if I tell it that it's uh, 6061, Oops, and I had a had a shift there, and so these vary in in the um, uh, amount of information that we can put into the post. So I'm going to go with the thickness first, by uh, the length, by three inches, at least pretty close to that. And then the tool fixture number, if we have one of those, is going to be, I'm going to put it into the vise, or if there was a set of numbered soft jaws or something specific to this part, we would build that in. And those all look good. All right, so here's where, if I want to use that fixture coordinate system, I can define it. And the entity, and under the method, I can go to a SolidWorks coordinate system. When I select the coordinate system, it overlays the cam coordinate system over the top of my SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. All right, so that's one method of setting up the, uh, the coordinate system. All right, I went ahead and X'd out of that because I want to go through the rest of the settings. Um, I've been skipping over configurations for a reason. If we have multiple configurations, uh, different sizes of the same part that are going to be able to accept the same tools, or we have uh, the different um, uh, machines that we might want to run this on. Configurations can typically handle both of those. So um, the stock manager then, let's go ahead and set up. 
All right, so stock type is the bounding box. If we have an extruded sketch, maybe I have an odd shape or I just draw a sketch, it can recognize that sketch. If we import an STL file that uh, is uh, some um, in some relation to the uh, to the part, we can use it as its uh, as its stock, and then we can actually import a part file to overlay as a second solid body or uh, pick up as uh, as that geometry. So yeah, that's picking up a, a part file. Coordinate system right now is set at the origin or coordinate system one. Well, I haven't really defined that yet. If you want to add material, uh, most of the time I, I'm going to pick or I'm going to draw the sketch and do the extruded sketch um, to, uh, to have that additional. Uh, I would say that um, this information gets added into the program. So if I add let's just say ten thousandths to the um, the X and Y. Um, Z is one that I don't really like to add ten thousandths to. Mainly, or add, add any, any values to. Mainly because when I touch off at the control I'm going to tell it to go down and I want to see on my depths that when I tell it to go a quarter inch, that it's not reading 260. I don't want to have to do that math if I need to make a decision fix uh, fast in the um, in the machining process. The X and Y I'm not so concerned about. It's those plunges and those depths that I need that that um, reference to. So if we go that route, I will go ahead and put a minus 0.25. Oh, it is at minus 0.25. Uh, number of stocks, and then the stock is the bounding box. Notice that it kind of highlights and adds that additional material. Ten thousandths is pretty small, so... And let's see if it'll add it. So, hundred thousandths in both directions. We're locking that in, and I don't want to do that for, for Z. Alright, so if there's parts or solid bodies. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to uh, to pick those up. All right, so we have some oversized stock, uh, but I haven't um, gotten that far into it. So the coordinate system then, we can edit the definition and user defined. All right, so this is, we're back into either picking a coordinate system that we created, which was the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system, or by going user defined, if I have a location on the geometry, right? So if I were to pick that corner and then the x axis, and we want to go ahead and define these because it's going to um, help us control the directions and the rotation or the, the rotation of the axis as it, um, as we're making those. Um, uh, changes to the geometry. Uh, let's see, if I switch over to the part bounding box, well, then I'm going to be able to pick a point. All right, so said that we had that center. So just picking the, the top center of the part, well, I can see from my, my sketch that I got pretty close to that. If we go to the stock bounding box, then there is the stock that I created, and I can go to that point as well. All right, if we go back uh, through the uh, through the mix, it's still kind of referencing those edges, and a shortcut uh, fixture coordinate system two, and then if I assign it, it will pick that one up. All right, so it's going to switch over. Oh, and probably should have picked that location <laughs> instead. Anyway, in the coordinate system, if I went back to SolidWorks, I would pick the the point have my sketch and then the line and I would have that coordinate system. So however you get it into the mix, however you define it, uh, we're going to be able to um, to pick up those um, those locations. So I'm going to be able to touch off on the top of the part, the back, uh, and the uh, left side to have my zero, zero, zero. All right, so I don't need to um, see the coordinate system. So there's the second one. It also, well, apparently it created a 3D sketch for me. It makes me nervous that that 3D sketch is underdefined when I look at it. 
because if that can move, uh, we have a little bit of an issue. So I'm not sure that I'm uh, I'm going to stay with that uh, that technique. So we'll get uh, get rid of those because that was just an experiment, and I'll hide my coordinate system in my hole center. All right. So basic uh, basic setup parameters, and at this point, because Let's just kind of jump back in here real quick. The tool crib just shows the half inch tool. I can go ahead and hit OK. And I want to see what the, this what happens when we extract the machinable features. Alright, so I'll come over to CAM. You can find the extract machinable features here. Uh, we can also come back to, I believe I saw it under the stock manager, we can set up our own mill part setup. So when it extracts the machinable features, if we don't like the orientation or we don't like the way that it's selected, we can go back and set it up manually by creating our own uh, part, uh, part setup. So let's go ahead and extract machinable features. It'll reference the database. And the message popped up just off screen, our message box. And so based on what I told it back up under the options, it found the hole. But more importantly is um, that it is giving me a target at the, uh, the top center of the part. And my Z direction, my arrow, is pointing down. So that is exactly what I want. If we go back into the uh, mill part setup, look at the face. Because I didn't set it up manually, I don't have the option to face, perimeter, multi-surface, any of those items. Uh, I do want this associated. I can flip this around if it is the wrong side for whatever reason. But most of the time, I'm going to accept what, um, what it gave as default. All right, so since it, it found the, um, the hole, Let's go ahead with the uh, the parameters, and we have a strategy. Um, drill, bore, ream, and uh, thread, and drill only. So drill only, if I selected that, would try to go find a one-inch tool, and it might do a center drill, um, a, um, a pilot drill at a half an inch or so, and then come back with the one-inch drill, whatever's in those those parameters. All right, so I needed uh, some additional operations, so I'm not really worried about the drill right now. So right-clicking, uh, we saw the edit definition. I'm not ready to generate an operation plan, but we'll take note of that. That is what is going to, after we've added our features and kind of have everything laid out, that's what's going to generate the operation plan get it over into the um, end of the mix. So a two, axis, two and a half axis feature, uh, part perimeter feature, multi-surface feature. I'm going to stay with the two and a half axis feature. Um, properties for that setup if we need it. Uh, views if we need to rotate. No, I don't want to delete the setup. I don't really care about renaming it. Suppressing it if we want to ignore it. Hiding it if uh, we need those operations. All right, so two and a half axis feature. We have to know a little bit about what we're telling it to do. So pocket is an interior feature. Um, let's stay with the, um, you know, kind of the standards. The slot usually has open ends. Um, still a, a pocket operation, but something will have an open air edge. The corner slot will kind of have two sides that are open. The boss is what we're going to end up with a perimeter or something that stands up. An open pocket would be uh, interior geometry but can overrun the edges. We're looking for the face feature so that we can start off by generating our Z, uh, Z face. And then an open profile would be I want to run down just one side, lift up, come down the other. Maybe I have a, a large plate. That <clears throat> that I'm going to have to change clamps on and that we can we can switch and go through that um, that process. Engrave feature is going to follow the the text and a curve feature will follow whatever curve we've uh, generated. So I'm going to switch uh, or I'm going to select the face feature and our selection filter is for the outer loop. 
be careful of picking the face because it will see this as something typically to avoid. So we want to go to the outer geometry and let's see we're converting to a loop. It didn't quite uh, pick that. There's the um, the loop so I think it actually got that the way that I wanted. And then we're going to look at the end condition. Uh, contour select tool. Let's see if that did it. All right, so outer outer loop. Now like I said if we go with the face, two valid profiles, so that was the one that I want. And that would be the outside edge, ignoring the hole. Okay, so I messed something up there. Okay, so I closed out of that, and we're going to just run through it again. I think that first selection um, was uh, was being included. So two and a half axis feature, nothing is selected, so that is where I want to be face feature, um, the outer loop, and then when we select uh, select the geometry, the whole thing highlights, and now I'm just seeing the loop. I'm not seeing that, uh, that face. So I picked um, apparently one too many items. We're looking at the profile, and it's a finished strategy. If we go to roughing, typically roughing will take multiple steps. Um, and then we get to up to stock. Since I didn't add any stock to this, I wanted my zero to actually be zero. And I'm going to give this a blind in condition. And if I look at it as one inch, I'm going to check for the direction of that stock by reversing the, the toggle. All right, but I really only need about 10 thousandths of material there for it to clean up. So after I verified kind of exaggeratedly <laughs> the... Uh, uh, the direction, then I'll go to ten thousandths of clearance, and it will go to the stock extents for the profile, right? And I'm not concerned about islands, but if we wanted to avoid something in there, we could pick um, the selected item entities and tell it not to get into those, and what is going to happen with those in conditions. So once I hit OK, I'm going to have the face feature. I don't like the order, so we're going to just drag and, and drop, so left click, hold down on the hole, uh, drag it past the uh, the face feature and that reorders. So different programs have different methods of adding operations in CAM and CAMWorks. You right click on the uh, the operation, we'll go back into a two and a half axis feature so we get all of that and that will add it after that feature. All right, so try to minimize the amount of reordering that I have to do. So if I tell it that this is a boss, and we come down, selected features, if I go to the base, or pretty much just anything that goes all the way around, we're going to have a, a finished strategy. Oh, and notice that I hover, we have the contour mill, tool IDs, basic information for the uh, machining conditions. Uh, a blind in condition if I tell it to go up to stock then it should reverse All right so that one's notice how it's going down to the end it would kind of start there and go go down I really want it to start at the base and go up All right, so we just need to watch what we're getting for previews there are no islands to, uh, to pick on this so we'll go ahead and hit OK so my rectangular boss and then we have the uh, the hole drill, and we can see what that, that gives us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead with the generate operation plan. And I need to move that cam works, uh, or the cam uh, message window. All right, so let's bring the message window over a little bit closer, and we'll add, uh, send that out. So when I generate the operation plan, it says it's extracting, recognizing, finding the conditions, 
and so satisfies, 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 then it's going to pick those tools, add those, uh, add those items. All right, so I use my tool one for the contour. Um, it picked a relatively large center drill that I'm not um, not really impressed with. And um, so let's go through the operations and we'll start making a, a few changes. So I'm going to edit the definition. And I do not want to generate tool paths. If you generate the tool paths, I kind of use this as my accounting method of I have looked at each of these, I have approved them, I am happy with them, and then I can go to the next one. When all of them turn from blue to, I'm not sure which color these turn to, but uh, when these um, all uh, have been accounted for, then we're okay on the tool path. All right, so I'm going to stay with the, uh, the flat end mill, and I can hit select, and we'll replace the corresponding tool holder, and I'm don't really need to see the dialog, so I'm just going to go hit yes. So, like most CAM packages, the tool holder is mainly there to look for collisions if you have um, geometry that um, uh, could be gouged or run into. All right, so I didn't update the uh, the definition, but now we're at a one and a quarter, and um, it picked up that information. Let's see. On the feeds and speeds then, uh, the contour, whatever this one found, I did make that adjustment, but this um, uh, this operation wasn't, uh, wasn't the default. So I'm going to switch over to operation, and that takes it off of the library, which was set to, well, that does look like my numbers, so those don't look like my numbers though. <laughs> So if we want to go into the library and see what's set and start to run those, maybe at some point we do library. I'm more comfortable with operation. And since the max RPM I set at the machine, even though I told it it was 9,000, uh, it's going to the, go to the max RPM of the machine at 7,500. And definitely not at uh, 373, so I think we ended up with 27. I'm going to turn the percentages off so that I can enter those values, and I'm okay with with those numbers. All right, so facing, I have percentages. This is actually one that's okay. I'm I'm kind of okay with the uh, the percentages. Um, we're at um, oh, this was the facing operation, not my contour. I need to look at that on the next one. Okay. So now I'm caught up. Uh, max depth over 70%, minimum side offset about 10%, so about 50 thousandths, uh, maximum 25%. Um, cut angle is going to be automatic angle, so typically it'll find the long edge. Going to the feature extents, um, no islands. And then if we needed steps, if we needed cuts, then we're at 50 thousandths. If you don't see that inch in the depths of uh, depth parameters, make sure that the percentages are where you want them, that you can uncheck those and get those out of your way. On the NC, I'm going to switch over to the setup definition. So that would be one that I would note for later. I want to go back and change that in the, in the TechDB. And feature operations, lead-ins, so again, with the uh, the percentages, we'll take a look at what the what it looks like on the tool preview. But most of the time, these are going to be okay. Not really need to do anything under advanced, but I still like to look at every one of these absolute uh, positioning and coolant. And then on the optimize, uh, we're not really jumping or doing anything, so we'll just preview it, and that's going to show me the tool path and like what I see, I'm going to go ahead and into the operation parameters, expand it back out, and then hit OK. All right, so if I don't preview, I pretty much won't get that, um, that tool path. And at some point, I'll have to go back and generate the tool path at the operation or edit it and preview it within the operation. So main thing is, as, as far as the generate tool path, you don't want to do it from the part setup level or from the, uh, the cam level because everything underneath 
And so notice that the face operation is com relatively complete. We'll call it complete as in black and the other operations are in blue. Alright, so I'm not going to do this step and repeat. We're just going to treat this as a um, around, well, let's well, let's go ahead and do a roughing and, and finishing. So we'll switch from library to the operation. So again, I can run that tool at 7500. I'm going to go ahead and stay with the lock. We'll turn off the percentages. I'm just hitting tab in between these and it jumps over. And the contour then for a roughing, I'll leave uh, five thousandths on the, the outside. And when we're going through the, uh, the defaults for this operation, there were other items that were part of that list. Well, in the actual operation parameters screen, they're going to be embedded. All right, so corners and settings are going to have those additional items if we need them. Um, if we turn this into a chamfer machining operation, um, as a contour running around the outside, an edge break or whatever, then we have to deal with the contour of the apex, the, you know, pretty much how we're going to set that uh, depth. Uh, we're staying in climb, and we're going uh, to depth by region. And rest machining, there's no, no rest. Um, depth parameters equal exact and distance along. So it's going 50%. 50% is the max. Our first cut amount would be 0.25, and then the max cut amount would be 0.25, so this is telling it to take three steps at a quarter of an inch. If it divides that up some other way, all right, so I tell it I want to overrun this, and I go from 0.75 to maybe 0.77. It's going to max out at the... Um, the three passes, so it'll divide that up um, probably to two and change and um, uh, adjust it accordingly so that all of the passes are, are equal. So 0.77 divided by four. <laughs> all right, so again with the, uh, the percentages, if I want to go to percentage of the tool diameter, or if we want to put in hard numbers, I'm going to turn the percentages off and clear those out. All right, so use the setup definition, one inch and point 0.1, I'm okay with. Compensation is on. If I turn that off, it's not going to initiate the G41, G42. Since this is roughing, we'll go ahead and turn it off. But we still want it with, with compensation. It's going to go tool center line. Notice what happens when I go without compensation. It goes right down the selection, right down the edge. All right, so we're going to leave it with compensation. And then my options. We have a machining depth. I can override the machining depth. I could have given it a, another strategy that says it was through, but I would rather be able to control this. So I mentioned the 0.77 to go a little bit past not too worried about entries. The lead-in, we're going to go to the start point, and I'm just going to give it a parallel lead-in. So since this is a rectangular part, start off, start off of the part, feed in, go around. And percentages again, I don't like doing that math, so 260, an overlap of 25 thousandths, all of those uh, look pretty good, and we're set to same as. And then how do we want to get from one level to the next? Right now it's saying retract to clearance. And so the side passes, we can go stay down, which will move to the next level or next starting point and then move down or direct, which will angle uh, down to the, um, to the next start point. So we'll, we'll try each of those. If I know I have the clearance, I'm going to stay with direct. And then the, uh, the cut depths. Uh, we'll have to see what that does. All right, so advanced. Again, don't really have to do anything in there. I just want to make sure we're in absolute flood. Arc move favorite feed rates at 100%. So with a contour, if we were making a small slot with an almost on-size tool, 
and at 27 inches a minute there's a lot of tool deflection going through that last little bit of the arc I could have it feed across the uh, the slot and then slow down to 50% as it goes through the arc travel to minimize that tool deflection. On optimize, I think we're okay. Let's go ahead and preview it. There are my steps and it runs just a little bit past and I end up with one, two, three, four steps. All right, we'll jump back into it. Okay. And then I don't want to go through and set all of that up again. So I'm going to right click and let's see, we want to actually, let's see, this is going to be a two and a half axis mill operation, contour mill. And because that was the last one that was set, the tool one is our pick. Um, the operation and notice it's copying from contour mill one we could tell it to go back to the tech DB and start fresh and then yes we want to edit the operation on creation no I'm not worried about naming them and the features are the rectangular boss so we'll go through and we'll check those and then hit the OK alright so it pulls it in tool is still there feeds and speeds probably maybe a little fast for the the finish pass and slow it down to 6400 and with the thousandth per tooth it slows down the XY I'll leave it at the 27 it's going to increase the feed rate per tooth and we're at three decimal places so I'm not going to see what it actually carries that out to there will be zero allowance and now I know I'm cutting this 0.75 I just need to tell it it's deeper. It's not going to go any deeper than what I told it in the features options. So if I did a one inch and a one inch, it will only go to what is listed here as the point, 0.75. So it didn't copy that over, which is kind of good. Everything else, we do want to turn compensation on for the finish pass. And let's go ahead and take it to the 0.77. If the 0.75 is fine, I don't need to do anything here. And lead in. And we're just going to kind of cover the bases here and retract clearance. Nothing in advanced, nothing to change in posting. Looking okay on the optimize. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay here. Notice mill 2 is still showing as blue. It's not been as uh, applied a toolpath so I want to generate the toolpath from that level and then I can see it and that wasn't what I was quite was expecting with the uh, the parallel so that stayed a little bit close and we're gonna have a little bit of a uh, buzz so is that one doing it too yeah so I didn't uh, pick very well on my on my lead-in And double double check. So I'm not sure which one is doing that. Let's just check the uh, the overlap. There it is. All right. So something in that overlap was was forcing it. So there's times where we're just going to have to observe and react to the results. All right, so that gives me the desired result. All right, so if we stay with the center drill, aluminum, I'm not um, not crazy about um, center drills, so I'm just going to add, delete that one. It adds it to the recycle bin. In theory, when it rebuilds, it goes through its process. It shouldn't add another center drill back in. I'm going to edit the definition. We're going to look at the uh, the tools first, and if I go back to the tool crib, well, these are the two that it loaded, that the TechDB loaded for me. And so when I come to the uh, to the drill, uh, I'm going to I'm going to replace that from the library. It picked a one inch, but I'm not happy with it, so it's locked into a drill. We're going to go through with a half inch, so zero to 0 0.5. All right, so we should see. 
at the very bottom a half inch drill. Okay. And I want to change its station number from four to one. Oh, sorry. No, I don't want to reuse the tool number. Let's try four to two. And now I have um, tool usage and screw machine drill. That all looks good. Feeds and speeds. Um, definitely not 6829. So that one would need to be adjusted. We're going to go to 200. And 15.30 I can uh, I can deal with. I'm going to just kind of round up there. Five thousandths uh, per peck. Um, or five thousandths per revolution. And then pecking. We're going to a um, hundred thousandths. No dwell. And here's where we can do straight drilling, drilling G83. Pecking G80. Or sorry. Straight drilling, drilling G81. Um if we do any kind of dwell then it becomes a g82 spot face uh, pecking then g83 high speed pecking g73 variable pecking depends on the capability of the post but that should activate the first peck plunge 200 and then each subsequent at 100 and then not sure what gun drilling is doing it should be the, the long drill so we'll see what that post says uh, I'm okay with staying with the setup definition. And we're not doing anything with compensation, feature options, ratting the tip length to the uh, to the mix. And then the advanced, nothing really going on in there. Posting, optimize, and preview one more time. Expand that out, hit OK. We have a tool path. All right, so... Because the tool selection was not the same, we have a warning. And just off screen, there's at the very bottom is a what's wrong. Tool selected was not from the tool crib. Okay, so I updated that. I can clear it by doing what's wrong and selecting clear. All right, so I want to add one more. We're going to pick a... whole machine operation and we'll go to contour mill and we're going to stay with the uh, the half inch tool don't really want to copy I'm going to go back to the tech DB on that one don't really care about the well default is the one that I adjusted so I, I do want to see the default in, in action one time tool we picked as the uh, the half inch was okay I'm not going to add a new tool and the features that we want was from the, the whole drill, unless it doesn't recognize that geometry. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. Let's see what it highlights. All right, so it has the outside and it has the center point. So the half inch. Fees and speeds. Well, jump back to 4,000. So. And that may just be that because of that operation, that pick, it didn't, um, it didn't quite, it left the operation, but I think it automatically adjusted. So no allowance, equal, um, equal steps. Um, we're going to angle and angle, let's go with 10 degrees. And if I give it a cut amount of the one inch again, and a cleanup pass, it should make a second pass. And we're still on setup definition, so that came over correctly. Compensation is on with compensation is good. And the depth, 7.7, seven, just to make sure that it clears. We're going to enter at the whole center, retract at the end of the lead-in. Lead-ins are pretty big here, so lead-in amount of uh, 30 thousandths. Mm, don't really care about overlap on this. We'll see what it looks like in the bore. And the arc uh, radius, um, maybe 0.06. And the arc angle, 90 at the minimum. 
maybe 120 to have it loop in and not gouge the, um, the outside. Nothing advanced, nothing posting, optimize, and preview. So a couple of swirls. Now apparently the step over, the cut amount, um, where would that be? So now we have to dig a little bit. And under the settings, we have a cut amount of 40%. All right, and if you don't know where this is um, uh, buried at, then we're going to start pushing buttons. So my cut amount uh, of 400 or 90%, 80%. And not worried about finish passes, cut amounts there. Let's go ahead and preview it again. And really, I just wanted to make that internal spiral. So it's going to kind of remove that material as it goes down rather than plunging in the center and trying to take it all at once. And then one pass at the end, lead out and clear. All right. So that gives me the, uh, the program. The, um, the other one that I think I need to put in here. Oh, we're still in the, uh, the operations, so I have to okay it. Now we can come back and I want to, I believe it's going to be a post operation. And if we tell it that it's a, uh, an operation stop, program stop, and bring the, uh, the table forward, I can insert that and that will clear. Uh, so different programs have different ways of, uh, of manning, managing. This post is probably going to put out a G91, G28 and do the, uh, the Z, Z0 and then G91, G28, Y0 to bring the table forward. So we can simulate the toolpath, different display options, standard slider bar for the speeds. Okay, you can go a little faster than that. Okay, if I don't get too button happy. Okay, maybe the fast speed was better. <laughs> okay, maybe not that fast. <laughs> we get the idea that it will run through and generate our geometry. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and accept. If I am at the operation level and tell it to post, post process, then it will only post that operation. If I come back up to the mill part setup, it posts everything under. If we go post from the very top, then if there are multiple setups, it tries to post everything. So post process, um, that's as good a place as any. So we'll save. And let's see what's happening under options. We already told it in our and our options to include that. So if we do the step, it will go line by line. So there's my percentage, there's my line, first line. If we do play, it does the whole thing. If I don't want to see all of that, then we can do the fast and it will just output to the, to the code. This last segment after the percent sign is the .set file. So it gives us an estimated time. It gives us our tool list. Um, we have that, um, that information separate and it gets written into each of the tool changes. So when I hit OK, it should launch the NC editor. And we'll let that uh, click click where we're. And reduce that down a little bit. And bring it in. All right, so pretty much like the other editors, it'll go through. We look at the uh, the code, has the various functions highlighted for us, and we can write in changes as we go. All right, so that's a good first um, uh, program. There's certainly a lot more and a lot more involved that we can do, but that'll give you a sense of setting up the uh, the operations any program one of the first things when i walk up to a new cam program is try to figure out those those options those settings 
uh, what's going on in the background and that helps me determine the logic that I'm going to use setting up these operations and going through the process of programming for these parts.